Welcome to Married to Movies. Industry insiders John Russell and Tracy Kring live and work happily in cinema matrimony. They're sharing behind the scenes adventures of writing, producing, and appreciating films. Good morning, babe. Good morning, Bab. How are you feeling? I'm, well, I got a little sniffles. Mm mm. It's no, 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 no. It's not COVID. Okay. Don't think that. <laughs> Uh, it's it's the weather change, and you insist that that's not a thing. That when the weather changes, you, you don't just normally no. get the sniffles. Or that, no, no, that's not what I'm saying. That's not what I'm you're saying. saying. The weather didn't change, but the weather did change. Uh, it's still the dead of winter. Yeah, it is the dead of winter, and it was 22 degrees. But there's sun, and uh, you know, there before there was like. Fog and there was more humidity. That, that's not that. You mean weather, as in minutia of weather? <laughs> oh yeah, well, minutia of weather. Okay. Yes, possibly there was fog this morning. That's right. not like the change of weather that causes colds. That's true. Well, I think I think it has to do with it, but that that's me. Okay. We have a new recipe, mm. which I don't even I don't. Can you even call it a new recipe? I mean, no. It's just, no, it's just a variation. It's just something that we did. Yes. Right. So we we made our breakfast bowl, but we cooked it all together at the same time. In the microwave. In the microwave. Exactly. Mm, it's really good. Is it? Mm-hmm. Has it incorporated? Mm-hmm. It's mm. delish. Well, there you go. Oh, wow. Just a reminder, good. folks, in case you are just joining us for the first time. We do the podcast while we eat breakfast. <laughs> I think they figured that out. I mean, we're eating right 30 now. 30 something episodes in. Yeah, we're always eating breakfast to begin because this is what we do in the morning normally. I got some chewy egg edge right mm. here. You got the egg edge. Any morning that we have breakfast and we don't record a podcast, we're like, why didn't we just record the podcast? Because I can't tell you how many times I'm just like, wow. This would have been a good podcast right here. This little discussion or, you know, half argument or, you know, and I'm just like, geez. But alas, we can't record a podcast every day. We did at the beginning. At, when we first started uh, last, uh, our, our first season, we uh, did the podcast every day. And that was uh, kind of, was, I felt like it was, was kind fun. of gratifying. Yeah, it was. You felt like you had accomplished like a big thing every single morning. Mm -hmm. Then so, I had to do nothing else. No, <laughs> not cool. So, ooh, that egg edge is good. Masters of air. Oh, I mean, we're Speaking really of fog. What? Oh yeah. Yeah. See the transition there. Yeah. Um, we're really like on the edge of our seats for every Friday. We are. And for some reason. Like, sometimes when Apple TV doesn't have anything really going on, I'll shut it off. Mm -hmm. I'm that kind of person who, the subscription, it's like you, you did Peacock for a certain We're show. We're trading or, streaming services all the time. Yeah. Right. So, so it was like, uh, you know, nothing's on. I turned it off. But I had forgotten about Masters of Air being on Apple+. Plus. So, you were like, wait. It's like Thursday, and you're already checking to see when it's going to be available on Friday. Mm -hmm. And you're like, wait, mm -hmm. is that on? Why don't we have Apple? Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we had to. We had so to I turned it back on immediately. Yeah, we had to get back on. Yep. And this last episode, basically the whole episode was dedicated to this one mission. And it got fucked up. Mm. Well, they thought they were being really smart. They were like, okay, guys. I'm going to lay out this really amazing plot. Mm -hmm. This plan we got to, what was it? Uh, like bomb a bearings plant? Ball bearings, yes. <clears throat> yeah, they were going to bomb a ball bearings plant. <laughs> it's Mouthful. all done with ball bearings. That's That 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 was from Fletch for you folks. It's yeah. all done with ball yeah. bearings. It's all ball bearings. Each like group of planes like has to take off. At a certain time, and they and all have like, to be in a yeah, certain fashion. Yeah, there were like three squads um, all over the place, and they were all supposed to coordinate together so that they could protect each other. Well, there was a really heavy it fog. It didn't work. Didn't work. And instead of just going, okay, this is 
not happening. This is not working. They're, they were like, uh, yeah, we're going to do it anyway. And no, it was so dumb. <laughs> it's like, oh, like is that really what people like in the military are doing? You wake up, there's fog. Everything's getting delayed. Like, why does the ball bearings plant have to blow up today? Mm-hmm. Why? Mm-hmm. Do it tomorrow. Mm-hmm. Or like, don't let people take off when it's like foggy. And and you're leaving, you're hanging them out there to dry. Hanging them out to dry, man. I was like, oh, they took off in the fog, but these people can't take off in the fog. Yeah. So they now got, their backup is they like got absolutely not there. decimated. They got you know, but as they're taking off, the uh, guy goes, "We're sending them into hell." Yeah, and it's like only eleven. <laughs> Here's of a 21. thought: Don't send them. Don't send them into hell. How about that? I don't. You know, know what? what? Your what plan, concept. your plan, really doesn't work now. Right. So it's time for a new plan, you fucking morons. This is true. This is true. But it was it was crazy. There was like this one shot where there were like planes and uh, pieces of planes and people and parachutes and it was like it was like confetti but human flesh. It was crazy. Oh, like this dude was like flying through the air and hit into their propeller and was like spaghetti. I really hope that uh, it, uh, when you do the, your um, uh, different clips of the show, that it was like confetti, but human flesh is one of the things. One of the things yeah, I put exactly. in. Because I'm just wondering, how are people going to react to that? Especially during the opening of Masters of Air. Right. And some of the shots in the show. Right. I'm getting a Battlestar Galactica feel. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Like that shot you're talking about with like, it was kind of slow-mo and right. everything was falling apart. Right. And it was like fire and everything. Right. That's so Battlestar. The opening is completely Battlestar Galactica. The What's whole, up with that? The whole, well, I mean, Battlestar Galactica, the, we're talking about the remake folks. We're not mm-hmm. talking about yeah. the Lauren Green one. All right. Uh, is one of, in my opinion, one of the greatest series ever made. It's I mean, an amazing series. I mean, all the way through it, even, you know, even does a, some people have serious issues with, you know, Eden and angels and Adam Look, and Eve and all that. I get at really, the end, but you know, I get really annoyed when people that I know would love Battlestar Galactica will not watch it right, because right. it's a sci-fi series. We'll be looking on every other streamer and nothing like strikes our fancy and we'll just turn it to Pluto. Mm hmm. Because mm-hmm. it's like, it's already been selected for you. Mm-hmm. It's like it's happening live. It's like I live streaming. I do like that. I do like that idea that on Pluto, you are, um, it's more like uh, cable. Where it's like, okay, this is on. Okay. Right. And I can watch it or not watch it. You know, as opposed right. to, because I feel like the, how much you want to watch something has to be s- to actually pick it and to stream it, That's it a lot. has to be a lot. But to watch it when it's already well, it's going. it's already going. Yeah. It's a different commitment. You <laughs> insist on calling it. The way that you pronounce it is I just Pateau. Say that, I, as if it's like a French channel. Pluto. I don't say it like it's a French channel. I just say Pluto. I say Pluto. It's like Pluto. 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 No, it's not Pluto. It's Pluto. I'm not saying Pluto. I'm saying Pluto. 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 And it has like really old sitcoms. Family ties. You I love and family, family ties. ties, man. I've always loved family ties. We called my little brother Alex P. Keaton when, you know, he was a kid. That reminds me of that Michael J. Fox documentary. Oh, that yeah. Was so the, good. The Michael still. J. Still. Yes. God, that's good. It was. That has some of the best editing when he's working family ties. Well, when, and when Back they know the their reenactments. They did. Amazing. And that are unreal. It felt like you were watching like documentary footage when he was like, okay, he uh, worked all day on uh, Family Ties and then he goes to the Back to the Future set. Then he comes home. Somebody drives him home. He sleeps for sleeps. like two two hours and they then wake he's him back up. to the Family Ties. Yeah. yeah. No, it was insane. It was insane. Oh, speaking of documentaries, mm. um, The Greatest Night in Pop. Oh my gosh. Did you know I've watched it twice? And I've thought of it 
so much. You get Lionel Richie and Michael Jackson and... Michael uh, was just supposed to write the song. Right. With Lionel Richie. And actually, Stevie Wonder was supposed to help, but he was busy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Stevie kind of comes off a little bit flaky in that, where he just like shows up at the recording session and he thinks that they're writing the song and they're already recording it. <laughs> right, right. No, but Stevie's amazing. And like... Well, well, Stevie saves the day with uh, thank God Bob for Stevie. Dylan. My God. Bob Dylan stood there, and like the second time I watched it, because I knew what was going to happen when Dylan got up to the microphone <laughs> okay, to sing. Don't say it, because you're going to piss people off if you say what you what what you said. <laughs> he looked like he was in a very very scary planet, uh-huh. you know, where he knew not how to function. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, he, you know, when I watched him in the in the swath of people doing the chorus, right? right. We are the world. He's, like, literally Look, not doing anything. I don't know if anyone has ever been in a recording studio, but it is terrifying. Well, and and especially terrifying with, like, every huge pop star at the moment in there with Michael oh, Jackson, absolutely. Diana Ross, Dionne Warwick, Harry Belafonte. No, there's I a mean, moment where... Uh, Ray Charles? Right. Ray Charles? <laughs> there's a moment where Huey Lewis... Uh, uh, they, uh, they tell Huey Lewis, okay, uh, figure out a three-part harmony here. And he's like, I've got to basically come up with a harmony to do. With Cindy Lauper with Cindy and Lauper Kim Carnes. And Kim Carnes on the spot. And with all these everyone people are watching. like looking at me, yeah. seeing what I come up with. No, Huey, Huey was terrifying. Great. Huey Lewis was great. And he took Prince's lines mm-hmm. because Prince refused to come. They had a brilliant idea of uh, doing the song, recording the song right after the AMAs because so right. many of these pop stars were going to be in town. Yeah, the American Music Awards, right. Well, th- well, back then, that was like a really big That thing. was a big deal. Yeah, the American Music Awards were the big. The American Music Awards was like as big as the Grammys back right. then. But right. it's just like... No, 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 no. I feel like it's country music I now. don't even think there's a I thing I don't even now. know if it is it. Yeah, I mean, I mean, I, they may still do it, but it's nowhere near as big there's as There's like the Country Music Awards, the CMAs. Speaking of the Grammys, you didn't watch it, but it was fantastic. I haven't watched it. It was like one of the best Grammys, I think, ever, because it was so emotional. It was so well put together, the way that they incorporated the most modern music with all of the classics. You had this great moment when, uh, 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 I think his name is Luke Combs and uh, Tracy Chapman, because he had the big uh, version of uh, Fast, Fast Car, Car, Fast Car, which <laughs> is such a great song. It's a great song. I mean, I think that's uh, probably one of the greatest songs written, you know, in probably this generation. I would just listen to the lyrics and it tells such a story. Oh, it's it's just such a beautiful And it's so full of emotion. Just the the feelings of desperation and poverty, but still there's a hope. Yeah. There's a hope there. I mean, I would I would put that song up there with like Yesterday and Bridge Over Troubled it's Waters so good. and those. It's so good. So, and then Tracy Chapman was there, yeah. which was incredible. She like never does this. Wow. Uh, and then there was um, <clears throat> uh, in the In Memoriam segment, uh, Annie Lennox did um, Nothing Compares to You. Oh, yeah. And she did it with Wendy and Lisa from Prince. Oh, interesting. Because Prince was the writer. Right. Right. Interesting. Yeah, it was cool. That's awesome. Yeah. Oh, I gotta look that up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah, it was it was really, really cool. And of course, um probably the highlight of the whole night was uh Joni Mitchell who had had uh a, a stroke, stroke, right? You know, a few years ago. I mean, you thought she was dead. I mean, Jesus. I mean, you know, like, she's like she's you know, already very old. Yeah, exactly. You know? And yeah, it's hard to come back from at that age. So she like relearns to walk, she look Jeez. relearns to talk, and she relearns to sing, and she appears and she sings, and she's great. Wow. I mean, I mean, she's not like you know, like she was in 1970, no. but you know, she has found a way to communicate the song in the most beautiful, heartfelt way. Wow. Yeah, and she was great. Oh, and then Celine Dion. Well, Wait. came on at the very, very end. But she's having some bad yes. trouble. No, no. Yeah, she has something called stiff man yeah. disease. Yeah, she like 
is yeah turning into stone basically yes exactly yeah and so she walked on and she was the one that gave uh taylor swift uh her uh album of the year honor wow yes like every night we're looking for something mm-hmm. right yeah so i think it was on netflix we found the nest oh yeah oh my god the nest <laughs> i love carrie coon mm-hmm. yeah. big fan the well, leftovers the leftovers um the the gilded, gilded age, age. yeah okay gilded i age. love carrie yeah, coon yeah yeah carrie I love coon. her voice she's really interesting i think uh, one of the things that i find very sexy about women is like their voice and carrie has that voice well and she was playing kind of a sexy part and i've never seen her do this where she was like she was fully nude yeah she was like you know you know she and it's and jude, jude law, law with bonin and yeah jude I mean, law come on yeah. I'm, I'm fully in on that so two great and she people. also had longer hair which i've never seen her do okay yeah. so we're watching, you know, the, the 15, 20 minutes in, nothing's going on. We have on. no idea what this thing we is We have about. no idea. Yeah. And that's something it that really... It sounds like a horror movie. The nest, you know? Well, <laughs> that's one of the things that I'm like snapped at you because you were like, I don't know, what's it about? You know, like I'm like, oh, hmm, you want to watch this? And you're like, I don't know, what is, what, what is it about? And I'm like, who cares? Wait a minute. Who cares what it's about? How is that a weird question? No, like, I, no, I'm just I mean, like, who I mean cares? everybody wants to know what something is about before but they why? watch it. Like, why don't you just watch it and maybe find you're not out, in the mood discover. for, you know, some we're sort so, of dark we're, cancer story? We're okay. so evolved as moviegoers that the, it's impossible to trick us anymore almost. Mm. So, like, what little mystery you can have about something, why not create it? Like, right. I don't want to read the synopsis, I want to see a picture. And say, hmm, okay, let's try that. That's all. Mm, I feel like that's the more that's dangerous. The more you You're tell me, watch a bunch of crap that well, way. <laughs> that's fine. You can turn it to something else. The more that I find out about a film, the more critical I get about watching it. You know, I talk myself out of it. It's like, oh, hmm, that picture looks interesting. That title is interesting. And then it's like, oh, well, who's in it? Well, nobody I know is in it. Oh, what's it about? Well, yeah, it sounds like I'm going to have to read subtitles. And, like, you just talk yourself out of it. Right. I don't I don't like that. I just want to, like, look okay. at it and watch I, it. Okay, I call bullshit. I call bullshit on you because... That happened we, last night. No, no, it did happen last night, and I'm going to say... I, don't be taking my point because this is my point about last night. <laughs> okay, we watched the trailer for uh, "You Hurt My Feelings." Right. You never ever would have watched that. No. Okay. This. Okay. Is, this and is you a watched the trailer, and the trailer you was so choose. good it made you, you want to watch it. You made me choose between two films. I did make you choose between because two films. you. We were going to watch you based either past on the lives pictures, or you hurt my feelings. Based yes. on the pictures, I would have watched Past Lives, which is actually like up for an Oscar, and that right. would have fit within my goals to watch Oscar films this year. Right. 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 So that was going to be my choice. Right. Past Lives. Right. And then you bring up this other Ju- Julia Louise Dreyfus movie, which I love her based on the picture. Right. I would have been like, no, I'd rather watch the, the Oscar nom. Yes, but when you watch the trailer, the trailer made you choose. <laughs> but see, see, you're proving my point, actually. No, I'm not proving your point. Because I talked myself out of it. Point. I talked myself you out did. of it. Yes, you talked. Okay. Yes, you talked. That proves your- my point. I don't think that proves your point. That proves my point that the more information I had, the more I talked myself out of watching the thing I actually wanted to watch. And here's what happened. We didn't watch either. Yeah, we goofed <laughs> off on TikTok and on our on Instagram and stuff, and then it got too late. <laughs> Why does that happen? Uh, okay. But we will. We will watch those movies and we okay, will. Okay, but uh, The Nest. Our, okay, the, the nest. nest. Okay, The Nest. We're watching it. You, you start getting bored and you start looking it up on IMDb. Yeah. And I have a hard time with Carrie Coon because I always think she's this other actress too. The oh. Anna Torv, right? Okay. Anna Torv is awesome. Love okay. her too. Who's? They look the same. Okay, who's Anna Torv? What? She's from uh, uh, Mindhunter. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Love her. She looks the same. Oh my god, she does look the same. Last of Us. She's the one in Last of Us, not Carrie okay, wait, Coon. Wait, wait. Was it Carrie Coon or or Torv that was in that movie Boston Strangler? 
Uh oh. <laughs> Which one was it? I think that's Carrie King. <laughs> I think it is. Which one was it? <laughs> I think it's Carrie King. She was in Boston Strangler. Okay. Because I can't tell which one of those was in that. Uh, hold on. I, I'm going to... Uh, that was a pretty cool movie, by the way. That was a pretty cool movie. Hold on. I'm, I'm going to... Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're looking it up. But, yes, the next... Yes, Carrie Coon was in the Boston Strangler. Carrie Strangle. Coon was in it. Okay. She you was weren't in sure, though. Ghostbusters, the new one with the kids, the teenagers. Yeah, yeah, okay. And she was in The Post... As the useless wife yes. delivering sandwiches. Completely useless. Totally delivering sandwiches. In yeah. The yeah. Well, you and I found, probably you found, on uh, some rando channel, you know, I don't even know, like Plex or some weird ass right. channel like that that's like Freebie or something. Right. Um, this show, this TV show, I think it only has one season called The News Reader. Yes. And that's Anna Torv. And it's kind of like... Right. Um... It's very cool. It's like it's a period like, it, piece. It, yeah, it's like it's set, like it's anchor set a, people. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. In the eighties. Yeah, it's like eighties uh, uh, local news. Local news in Australia. Yeah, and the yeah. guy, the guy who's like trying to become her like co-anchor, right, is gay, right, and but she's super attracted to him and like wants and she to be doesn't with care. Him. And she, yeah. Yeah, 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 she, she doesn't don't care. care. Yeah, no, that is a great freaking show. Yeah, the newsreader. So start, I'm like looking you start around. Reading uh, reviews. I started from reading the reviews. I'm just like, and that basically, I'm trying to get us to stop watching this because yeah, you're it's trying just, to talk me out of watching. Not, it. it's 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 kind of going somewhere, but it's like Look, I don't care dude, where it's going. The, Jude Law's character, like he was spending so much money, it was oh, giving was me so anxiety. Terrible. He was so terrible. I was getting yeah. anxiety. He was lying to her about everything. No, the but the tone they were able to create, yeah, was like probably more important than the actual what was happening right the tone they were creating with it was what was making you like well i think what's interesting feel is something that it kind of had the vibe of a horror movie because it's like okay they're living one place then he says okay we need to go to and he buys like this british he estate. rents it for a year. Yeah, yeah, right, this right. Giant, this there's giant. There's definitely person. ghosts there. It, right. It feels like, okay, this is a horror that's going to happen. Well, But it's yeah. like personal horror. Uh, review one. Slow burn. No. Anticlimax. No point. Waste of a bank holiday afternoon. The right. horses deserve an Oscar. The horses deserve an Oscar. Okay. Cowardly storytelling. Thriller? Not. Borefest. Yes. Not for everyone, for sure. Okay, uh, okay that was one of... Wait, how is that spelled? A-G-H. <laughs> uh, uh, okay. Hard to classify this film. Kept my attention. Very choppy directing, filming, and not much happens. Okay. Pointless and depressing. Yawn. Never really lifts off. A pointless slog. A I, pointless <laughs> slog. I wanted to punch someone at the end. <laughs> there you go. Now we're getting somewhere. A pointless <laughs> slog where I wanted to punch someone at the end. Boring and genuinely made me hate horses. <laughs> okay, okay. Snorefest, okay. start to finish. Yeah, well, Don't okay, waste well, your time. It, Worthless. This, this feels bore. like... It's all kind of all over the Starts, map. Starts then flops. Waste it's, of time. It's mostly I saw no point reviews. to it. I oh, actually man. couldn't finish it. I fell asleep. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. I maybe made it forty minutes. Yeah, yeah. We were forty minutes. And is it something you would go back to? Okay. Here's the thing. Yes, if I wanted to fall asleep. Oh, okay. There's there's another movie. If okay. I know that I'm having some issues with insomnia, I'm having mm. a hard time calming down. Okay. I can put this on and go fast asleep what movie is that tinker taylor soldier spy <laughs> okay i really want to talk about invasion of the body snatchers the donald sutherland version okay but not on this one because we don't have time on this one but on the on another one well speaking of science fiction we have to get to origin oh look at that segue <laughs> That segue. I'm like, okay, hold I'm on. like on that segue. I'm like standing up and I'm like moving right and left. And just okay. Now, everywhere. this is what that segue just did in my mind. Okay. When you said that. <laughs> no, it was like, it was like a girl uh, at uh, Mardi Gras. 
she lifted her shirt and her boobs came out. Like that was the segue you <laughs> just did. How is, it was how such and it was just like, whoa, that's a segue. <laughs> Oh, I see. You it mean, was as if when you turned your when you turned your head, you were not expecting boobs. Is what you're saying? Yeah, I was just like, was I like, looked over. And I was, was like, like, Hey, what's over here? What? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. That was the kind of segue that was. If you want to actually watch the editing process, you can check that out on YouTube mm. on our YouTube channel, Married to Movies. YouTube, like Pluto. Y- YouTube. <laughs> YouTube. YouTube. <laughs> Interior, Emmeline's bedroom, day. Emmeline, a 10-year-old autistic girl, is working in her bedroom. The walls are covered in posters of famous robots like Robbie from Forbidden Planet, Robot from Lost in Space, The Iron Giant, and Wally. Blue light swirls across the wall, giving the impression of being underwater. On her work table is every imaginable electro, servo, and wire, along with tools that seem unusual for a 10-year-old to use. She's deeply involved in soldering. A puppy-sized robot walks up to her leg. It is a mechanical dog shape, but shrunk down with a pink fake fur mohawk. Emmeline's mother is standing in the doorway, but not entering her space. Grace, they're almost here. Emmeline doesn't look up and continues soldering. Could you put the tools down and get ready, please? I want to get Robbie fixed before he gets here. Emmeline, can you stop and look at me? We've talked about this. You have to think outside of what you want and respect other people too, especially today. Chief Executive Officer of Origian International Partnerships, number three on Forbes' richest men in the world, number 10 sexiest man. He's coming to our house in about 10 minutes, so would you please stop doing what you're doing and get dressed now? I'll be done connecting this in approximately six and a half minutes if you stop talking. That leaves me time to dress and run downstairs. What if he's early? Her husband comes up behind her. Grace gives him a look he's seen often. The frustrated to be the parent of an autistic kid look. It's a challenge and they try. Let's go, ladies. Did you finish vacuuming? Yes. Did you hide the vacuum? Yes, sure did. (sighs) Have it your way, Emmeline. Hurry up, honey. They leave the doorway of Emmeline's room. Emmeline looks up and sees that they are not there. She picks up her robot dog and lifts up the hair, sticking a servo into a slot. Interior, white car, day. Her phone rings. Celia takes a breath and answers the call. Yes, sir? I don't like this child trafficking angle. I don't mind the roll doll stuff. That's in good fun, but not the trafficking. Absolutely agree. Let's put something together to kill that before it gets any legs. We'll get right on it. Make it a priority. By the end of the day, I want a new narrative. Consider it done. Great. Thank the team for me. Yes, sir. See you soon. Celia frowns and gets the other two on a video call. The answer right away. Uh, Was it Kurt Vonnegut, you know, who said that you start as close to the end as possible? And there's a whole kind of a vibe of this family. Right. That we are being introduced to right. immediately. Well, and like we're coming in like in this process of right. what's happening. We don't know what the hell has led up to this point. Right. We're, we really are coming in at the end. And that was before we even knew the Kurt Vonnegut quote. So good on us. I think by the time we're going to be doing a, uh, our next podcast, it will have been my birthday. It will. Yes. You're going to turn 53. 53. It's not, Actually, like, a, it's not like a huge birthday. Look, but. my 30s, like I was still getting treated like I was 20 in my 20s. Right. Right. Because you're still like, oh, you know, she doesn't really know anything. But then when I turned 40. Right. It was like people started listening to me. Well, that's what David Bowie said. David Bowie said that. Uh, but when, when you're in your 40s and on, you become the person that you should have been to start with. See you later, folks. Woo! I'm expecting a bead necklace. <laughs> throw it at you. Throw it. Actually, I would throw it on you because you're the one who did the segue. <laughs> okay. It's hard not to get romantic about movies. Thanks for listening to Married to Movies. John and Tracy will meet you for breakfast tomorrow.